David R. here. Today I'm going to talk to you about this book, The Rational Male by Rollo Tomasi. Rollo also wrote two other volumes, Volume 2 and Volume 3. I've read this one. I haven't read Volume 3 yet. So, who is Rollo? Rollo is this guy. He looks like a rock star. You could say he's like the rock star of the manosphere. A lot of people refer to him as the godfather of the manosphere. But I say rock star. I mean, look at that picture. I think this book is a rite of passage for men these days. In the old days, guys had to prove their manliness by hunting an elephant or a tiger or uh, jumping into fire. But now you have to read books like these. Because you don't want to be a beta. Before you start reading this book, you want to watch the first Matrix movie. There's a lot of terminology in this book that's taken directly from that film. For instance, you take the red pill or you take the blue pill. If you take the blue pill, you're still sleeping, you're in fantasy land, everything is as it always has been. If you take the red pill, you're awake. You know what's going on. You see things for what they really are. There are terms like being plugged in. Being plugged in is just basically blue-pilled. You uh, are in the matrix. Life is good, or so you think it is. But when you're unplugged, you have taken the red pill. You see life through a different lens. Like uh, the quote at the beginning of the book, Neil asks, why do my eyes hurt? And Morpheus answers, because you've never used them before. That's what happens when you are red-pilled. What this book is about, this book is basically about red-pilling men. It's about waking men up. Uh, it's about teaching men to unlearn their feminized conditioning. Like it or not, we live in a very feminized culture. It seems like everything revolves around women. Even our heroes, our action heroes, are women now. Everything is feminized. Some men are completely lost in that feminization. As you can see here. Or even James Bond went trans. See what I mean? And now we have an actual Bond woman. And Daniel Craig gladly passed the torch because he's a feminist himself. So as you can see, the feminist matrix is spreading. What this book is not about, well, it's not misogynistic. It's not anti-women. In fact, Rolo's been married for over 20 years and has a daughter. But uh, unlike MGTOW, which stands for men going their own way, which I, I don't have anything against, to be honest. I think those guys are, you know, they're playing it safe. But Rolo talks about how to communicate with women, but in a red pill manner, not in a uh, men are from Mars, women are from Venus manner. Now, this isn't a book for incels because incels, they're involuntary celibate. They don't really have anything to do with women. Rollo wants men and women to be together, but he wants men to be men and not be feminized. We've been lied to and all this communication stuff, all this soft around the edges, this get in touch with your feminine side. It's just been a lie. Now, what I'm going to discuss in this book, the soulmate myth, the section on a woman's imagination, buffers, plate theory, AFC, average frustrated chump, kill the beta, unplugging, game, SMV, sexual market value, hypergamy, and the iron rules of Tomasi. There are many things I'm missing. I know that I'm missing alpha, I'm missing a lot of things. But I want you to 
read for yourself. You know, take this book and read it. It will apply to your life as it has applied to mine. But our lives are different. So I will take things out of this book that you may not even notice. Well, anyway, let's get started. The soulmate myth. There is no one. Rollo starts off by defining what one-itis is. One-itis is an unhealthy romantic obsession with a single person, usually accompanied by unreciprocated affection and completely unrealistic idealization of the said person. I think every guy has had one-itis, at least before he gets red-pilled. I've had it uh, three times in my life, unfortunately. And I have to say, each time it felt like paralysis. But um, each of those times was a very low point in my life. And uh, I think I just fell into it. But now I know better, (laughs) thankfully. Rolo says that there is no one. This is the soulmate myth. There may be lots of different ones, good ones, bad ones, but there is no one. He says that the soulmate myth is akin to like a religious statement. People who are atheist, agnostic, you know, they don't believe in God, but they believe there's someone for everyone out there. Now you can see the soulmate myth being perpetuated in songs like this. Or uh, older songs. It's in movies like The Notebook and novels. Rollo says that dropping the soulmate myth isn't nihilism. In fact, it will increase genuine desire between men and women. A woman's imagination. A woman's imagination is the single most effective tool in your game arsenal. Competition anxiety relies on it. Demonstrating higher value relies on it. Promoting sexual tension relies on it. The problem with a lot of guys is they spew out everything at once because they think, well, communication is the key, right? You just tell her everything. But Rolo says women don't want full disclosure. They don't want to know everything about you right away. They want breadcrumbs to follow. They want to get to know you little by little. And guys who tell everything all at once are perceived as boring. And then she'll move on to somebody else who gives her what she really needs. He says familiarity is anti-seductive and that it kills game. It kills passion. He says be unpredictable. Perfect is boring. You could also change up your habits. Make some money. Get a promotion, lift some weights, go to the gym, change your look. And all these things bring back that competition anxiety and make her more sexually attracted to you. Buffers. The Merriam-Webster definition of a buffer is any of various devices or pieces of material for reducing shock or damage due to contact. In social terms, buffers are used for reducing or completely eliminating female rejection. Rollo mentions several buffers, but I'm only going to mention five. One is the long-distance relationship. Two is idealization of gender. Three is scarcity mentality. Four is leagues. And five is porn. The first buffer is a long-distance relationship. This is where the guy clings to the relationship because he's afraid of rejection. Maybe he'll break up with this long-term relationship one, and then he has to hunt for a new one, but he gets rejected maybe five times, maybe ten times, and he takes it personally. According to ThoughtCatalog.com, the writer Milan David says, There are seven reasons why your long-term relationship is doomed. He says, it's not a real relationship. Words lose their meaning over time. 
Words are nothing without action. But with the distance between you two, any and almost all action is impossible. It demands too much. Patience is good, but when you're waiting for nothing, what's the point in everything else? You lose touch with reality. You get tired. You get tired of the emails, the Skype schedule, the fantasy dreamland. It gets old after a while. You are miserable. Any relationship that makes you feel as miserable, helpless, and hopeless as an LDR isn't good or healthy. It's not worth it. Though it's safe and you may love the person, you're better off with someone you could be with instead of someone you hope to be with. When a man is free, he has options. And as Rolo says, we've always had the keys to our own prisons. We're just scared to use them. Idealization of gender. This is when you fixate on one woman, that one-itis is very strong, but it prevents you from having to go find somebody else. It reduces rejection, right? But the thing is, though, when you are fixated on one girl, she knows it, and she's going to use your love as a weapon. And believe me, she will use that weapon scarcity mentality this is the uh, take what you can get and be glad you got it there's a couple guys in my neighborhood that are like this one guy walks down the street with his girlfriend or wife or whatever she is and she screams at him you can hear this girl from all the way down the block and then my other neighbor His woman sees other men whenever, and he still sticks it out. So I guess they uh, are glad they've still got the girl, right? (laughs) They're not going to look for anybody else because they might get rejected. It's terrible. According to PUA Wiki, a scarcity mentality refers to the mindset and subsequent set of behaviors associated with a person who has limited options in their life, be it with regards to girls, job prospects, or general relationships. With regards to women, having a scarcity mentality is one of the biggest turnoffs and least attractive qualities a man can display. If a guy has a scarcity mentality with regards to women, this means he typically doesn't get girls. What you need is options or perceived options. Play a covert game with her. Remember, women operate in the covert. And uh, let her think you have options, even if you don't have any right away. The fourth buffer is leagues. Like, guys will think... I can't approach that girl. She's out of my league. You know, she's uh, too attractive for me. Or she's too socially connected for me. You see? But what you have to do before you decide you might want to approach that attractive woman, or even to get over the fear, you have to find a flaw in her appearance. (laughs) I know. You're thinking... Okay, this girl is like a 9. You may say she's a 10. I say there are no 10s. But uh, let's say she's a 9. She's the best looking girl you've ever seen. There is a flaw in her appearance. Somewhere, somehow, there is a flaw. You have to find it. (laughs) That's my philosophy. That is not mentioned in the book. A lot of guys won't even approach an attractive woman. They might think she has a boyfriend. Or husband. But to be honest, if she wants you, yeah, that boyfriend stuff or husband thing, nah, it doesn't really matter. And uh, you might think she's a bitch. But you have to understand all women are bitches. At least to some degree. Porn is the last buffer I want to talk about. Porn requires no social skills. You don't have to learn how to game. You don't hunt. But also, you don't get rejected, right? It's simple. 
All you need is an internet connection, a computer, or a phone, and you've got hot girls everywhere. You can imagine yourself fucking them. But in reality, some other dude is fucking them, and you're watching him screw her. You're not screwing anybody. You're only screwing yourself. (laughs) If you think about it, you're wasting your time. Go out and hunt. Hunting is what men do. Okay, well, on to my next topic. Plate theory. Plates represent women. And when you have a lot of plates spinning, it means you have a lot of simultaneous options. Several options going on at the same time. And Rollo says that a man with options is a man with power. He says, real options are the cornerstone of confidence. And just because you're spinning a lot of plates doesn't mean you're having sex with each and every plate. Now, if you are, so be it. But if you're not, so be it. He says that the cardinal rule of relationships is in any relationship, the person with the most power is the one who needs the other the least. Let that sink in for a minute. Like those guys I was talking about earlier, their women have the power. They don't care if they lose these guys, but these guys care if they lose these girls. Makes sense, right? I've been there too. I've been that guy who needed her more than she needed me. She had the power. And, and she used it too. <laughs> okay, women are natural plate spinners. Rulo says that they do it blatantly, which is true. Just look all over the internet. And uh, society says, hey, you go, girl. Now, most relatively attractive women have what are called orbiters. And these orbiters are the maybe guys. You know, maybe she'll throw him a bone. Maybe not. Most likely not. And these orbiters, or beta orbiters, give her attention. And attention in the female world is currency. You know, like a guy has a top paying job. Well, a woman on Instagram or wherever, she's getting all this attention. That is her currency. Jared Trueheart, in an article from Return of Kings, says five ways men make themselves feminine. And I'm going to read. Beta orbiting is downright girly. Have you ever seen a movie in which the popular girl walks around high school with all her uglier friends trailing behind? Beta orbiters are those uglier girls. They want something from the pretty popular girl but don't have the balls to go for it directly, nor do they have the confidence to pursue what they want without a handout. So they hang around the pretty popular girl, hoping that she will offer what the others want. AFC, Average Frustrated Chump. This person has one-itis. He's a serial monogamist. He subscribes to the soulmate myth. He subscribes to feminine idealizations as well. He also supplicates to women. To comply with gender equalism, she must increase, he must decrease. He's okay with that. He's okay with thinking she's the special sex and he's the disposable sex. He has an over-reliance on rejection buffers. I would say uh, porn and the long-distance relationship ones are his two primary buffers, but uh, definitely the long-term relationship buffer. He also has a martyr schema. He believes that the more he sacrifices, the more she'll love him. Uh, This isn't the case, obviously, because women really don't appreciate men. And uh, since most women are feminists, they're definitely not appreciating men. I want to read a quote by Camille Paglia. She says, Men have sacrificed and crippled themselves physically and emotionally to feed, house, and protect women and children. 
None of their pain or achievement is registered in the feminist rhetoric, which portrays men as oppressive and callous exploiters. What do men have to do to remedy this situation? You have to kill the beta. Before I go into how to kill the beta, I'm going to read a list of 20 beta male qualities from DerekRake.com. This will show you what we are dealing with here. One, you can't say no to your woman. She's dominant over you. She's the boss, like those two guys in my neighborhood. You avoid confrontation with her. You're a pushover. You keep track of the mean things she did to you, but you don't do anything else. You keep asking her for direction. What do you want me to do? You exhibit passive-aggressive behavior whenever she does something you don't like. You're super sensitive, and you take many things personally. You're looking for advice on how to handle your woman. You're a perfectionist. You try to hide your weaknesses and mistakes all the time. She's more interested in talking to you than sleeping with you. You hide your true feelings from her and from everyone else. When you say or do things that are true to you, you feel guilty. You're not your own priority. Your woman is. Your priority is her happiness, so you never do anything to offend or hurt her. You put up with her shit a lot, but she doesn't put up with yours nearly as much. When you cuddle or hold hands, she's the one who lets go first. When she meets or hangs out with other guys, you get jealous. Um, I think she could be cheating. But anyway, the kitchen is your domain, not hers. You ask permission during sex. Are you ready? When she criticizes you, you agree. You claim to be a feminist and try to show how proud of it you are. Rollo says you have to kill the beta, but I say kill the beta inside of you before it kills somebody else. Like this. See these? pictures of betas killing how do you kill the beta what you do is you start educating yourself with uh books like these here the rational male or or this one this is a great one 48 laws of power you read articles from the rationalmail.com or return of kings.com return of kings isn't technically in service but Rouge has left the articles up you have to recreate yourself. You have to kill off the weak beta, and you have to become the strong alpha. In the 48 Laws of Power, Law 25 states, do not accept roles that society foists on you. Recreate yourself by forging a new identity, one that commands attention and never bores the audience. Be the master of your own image, rather than letting others define it for you. Incorporate dramatic devices into your public gestures and actions. Your power will be enhanced and your character will seem larger than life. Killing the beta is nothing unless you unplug. Unplugging. Unplugging from the matrix is not easy. The five stages of unplugging are similar to the five stages of grief. The first stage is denial. You're still plugged in. He says, these guys are a bunch of clowns. There's no way this works on women. Women aren't stupid. Two, anger. Post red pill awareness. He says, this is ridiculous. Why should I have to jump through all these hoops for women? Three, bargaining unplugged maybe it does have some good points but forget the hot girls they're way out of my league four depression bitter taste of the red pill women really do respond to this puffed up act five acceptance game awareness maybe this is the way things really work game rollo mentions game a lot in this book but uh if you want a more detailed study of game a little more insight. I say go to Roosh's game book. Or you could go to The Game, but this one is 
<laughs> this is really old. Uh, this is by Neil Strauss. I say go with this one. Rusha's game book. Sexual market value, or SMV. Women reached their sexual peak at the age of 23. Men reached theirs at 36. A woman should have a child before the age of 25. No, you're going to think, no way, women have kids up to 40, right? Everybody's telling us this. Uh, it's a risk. In fact, I've heard that it's a risk after the age of 32. There could be complications. So uh, have a child young if you're a woman and watching this, which is probably unlikely. These numbers, 23, 36, are not static because... Some women won't hit the wall right away if they were into exercise, you know, fitness, health. They might not hit the wall until maybe close to 30. Women have all their fun times, all their party times, and believe me, they take advantage of it, up to about age 27. And at about 27 to 30 depending on when they're crashing into that wall, they start to get desperate. They start to think, hey, I can't compete with those uh, 20 to 23-year-olds. And so she starts to get desperate. The guy at age 30 doesn't get desperate. In fact, his confidence goes up because he's got the job. He's got influence. He's got money. And he's got girls who might be orbiting him. He's spinning plates. But the girl at that age, at let's say age 30, she's wanting to get married and tie this guy down so that uh, she has comforts and provisions. Women need guys to be ignorant of their sexual market value. So... They trick guys with articles like these. Most beautiful women over 40 or the most beautiful women over 50. And if you don't date these women, you're a misogynist or you're afraid of a strong woman. <laughs> really? I mean, come on. Hypergamy. This picture sums up hypergamy. Is he the best I can get? I mean, that's Superman, right? <laughs> but is he the best I can get? <laughs> Hypergamy is a woman's desire for a man with more wealth, better looks, more power, a guy who is better, stronger, faster. No matter what you've given to a woman, no matter how good you treat her, no matter how good you are to her kids, she reserves the right without shame or remorse to turn off her emotions and leave you for what she perceives to be a higher value male. That's how hypergamy works. You should always be on guard. You should never get too close emotionally to a woman because... You never know, all right? Men are the disposable sex. Women are the preserved sex. You have to keep that in mind. Rollo says, Hypergamy doesn't care how great a father you are to your kids. Hypergamy doesn't care how sweet, funny, or intellectual you are. Hypergamy doesn't care about those words you said at your wedding. Hypergamy doesn't care if he was your best friend. Hypergamy doesn't care whether or not the children are biologically yours. Check out this video by Richard Cooper. In the video, he says, Women reserve the right to change their mind at any given time. Enjoy it. You don't own the unicorn. It's just your turn. Even if you capture one, it's just your turn. He also recommends this book here, Sex at Dawn. I haven't read this yet, but I took his recommendation and got it.
The Iron Rules of Tomasi. Iron Rule 1. Frame is everything. Always be aware of the subconscious balance of whose frame in which you are operating. Always control the frame, but resist giving the impression that you are. Basically, frame is whose reality you choose to operate in. You are either in her frame or she's in your frame. But to be honest, she wants you to control the frame. According to Pat Stedman, some guy I found on the internet, he says that because... At the end of the day, frame is psychological. It's confidence, dominance. Such men are an influence, control, because they own frame. Don't think just because you're rich or super attractive that those are the only guys who control frame. (laughs) That's not true. There are jobless bums who control the frame in their relationships. That's just reality. Iron Rule 2. Never, under pain of death, Honestly or dishonestly, reveal the number of women you've slept with or explain any detail of your sexual experiences with them to a current lover. A woman will use this information against you. The moment you have an argument or the moment she wants to start an argument, if your numbers are too high, She may think, ah, he's just using me for sex, and that will be her excuse for breaking up with you. Or, if your numbers are too low, then she may think, well, he lacks experience. What you do is, like Rolo says in the book, get cocky with her. When she asks, how many women have you slept with? Just say, I lost count after 50, (laughs) or whatever. Do something like that, something kind of smart-ass-like. And you might get a laugh out of it. It's hard to say. And Rolo says that you don't want to fall for the open communication is the secret of a good relationship. Because women don't want full disclosure. They don't really want to know. They say they want to know, but they really don't want to know. Law 4 of the 48 Laws of Power states... Always say less than is necessary. Just keep that in mind. That's even biblical as well. Iron Rule 3. Any woman who makes you wait for sex or by her actions implies she is making you wait for sex. The sex is never worth the wait. A woman who wants to fuck you will find a way to fuck you. Now, look at these pictures here. She doesn't care when or where. It's just she wants it. And you happen to be there. You know, there's also some really good stories in this book here, inside, (laughs) about a uh, girl who is a prison staff person who has a thing for a leader in the Mexican mafia. And... (laughs) While he is in the shoe, or you could say in the hole, (laughs) she comes down into the shoe, special housing unit or hole, and lets him fuck her through the bars. (laughs) Even though her supervisor was coming down the hall, he did his thing, got it over with, and she was escorted out of the prison. But that explains if a woman wants to fuck you, she's going to find a way. And she doesn't really care what's at stake either. Iron Rule 4. Never, under any circumstance, live with a woman you aren't married to or are not planning to marry within six months. Never buy a home with a woman. Never sign a lease with a woman. Never... Let her move into your living arrangement and don't move into hers. Especially, don't move into hers. <laughs> I've made that mistake before. It's terrible. She uses her power against you. And believe me, it's not good. And now, Rolo says, whenever you commit to something, you lose two of your most valuable resources. Options 
and the ability to maneuver. When you live with a woman, you are powerless. It's all about power. It's a power struggle. You always have to maintain frame. You always have to be the one with the power. The pants. You have to wear the pants. (laughs) Now, some women take complete advantage of their situation and manipulate their beta boyfriends into doing things like this. Or like this. The second image is a husband and wife, but you get the picture, right? Iron Rule 5. Never allow a woman to be in control of the birth. In spite of all the birth control methods that women have, the single mother birth rate keeps climbing. Men have only two options, condom or vasectomy. Women have all kinds of options, but they don't use them. Rolo says, flush your condom. Flush it. Get rid of it because something may happen like this. Look at this website, checkpregnancy.com. Now look at this. This kind of behavior is encouraged. I think this is sociopathic. Iron rule number six. Women are utterly incapable of loving a man in the way that a man expects to be loved. Men are the hopeless romantics forced to be realists. Women are the realists using romanticisms to affect their hypergamous imperatives. Women love opportunistically. Their love is conditional. Let's just say you were making $200,000 a year. You met this girl. You fell in love. And everything was going great until you lost your job. Maybe there was an economic downturn. Well, suddenly that love (laughs) isn't so lovely anymore. And her hypergamous nature might kick in. And she's like, is he the best I can do? Or is he the best I can get? And then you're headed for a divorce. It just appears that women want us for our resources, <laughs> not for who we are. Iron rule number seven. It is always time and effort better spent developing new, fresh, prospective women than it will ever be in attempting to reconstruct a failed relationship. Never root through the trash. Once the garbage has been dragged to the curb, you get messy. Your neighbors see you do it. And what you thought was worth digging for is never as valuable as you thought it was. You have to understand also, she's probably hooked up with like three guys since you've been apart. It doesn't take long for a woman to hook up with guys. It's simple. All she has to do is be there. Just show up. And uh, even if you do get her back, what's changed? Is she any better than what she was before? Are you any better than what you were before? Don't root through the trash. Move on. Iron rule number eight. Always let a woman figure out why she won't fuck you. Never do it for her. Rolo says the latent function of leagues is for men to filter themselves for her approval. You reject yourself before she even has a chance to reject you. Iron rule number nine. Never self-deprecate under any circumstance. This is the kiss of death. Apologizing for lack of game isn't game. Don't be like those guys who say, Oh, She's the most amazing woman in the world. What's she doing with a guy like me? That places doubt in her mind. Remember, hypergamy is based on doubt. So if you keep telling her those things, she might think, maybe he's not the best I can get. Maybe this guy over here, he's better. So I think I'm going to divorce this guy, take everything he's got, and move in with that guy. (laughs) See how it works? This is what you say. You say, you got lucky, babe, when I found you. In conclusion, 
I like to add a few things. The first thing, don't spend thousands of dollars on seminars where guys try to tell you how to be a man. Watch videos by Rolo and other guys. Uh, secondly, don't put all your focus on women. I used to watch the MGTOW videos, and I had nothing against MGTOW. In fact, uh, Sandman was one of my favorites. But 99.9% .9 of their focus was on women. Why not focus on you? You. <laughs> I mean, do something with yourself. Don't spend all your time complaining or talking about women. Improve yourself. All that energy, that mental energy you're spending focusing on females, you could have used for something. You could have read books. You could have uh, got yourself into shape. So many things that you could do. Don't focus on women. <laughs> uh, thirdly, look after your health. Stop drinking. Don't drink. <laughs> I used to do it. I used to drink a lot. In fact, my alcoholic friends were afraid for me. They were scared. They thought maybe I was going to die or something. That's how much I drank. I glossed over a lot of things in the Rational Mail book, especially the alpha traits. And that would have been a good thing to cover, but I covered so much, and I don't want to reveal all the mysteries right away. I want you to experience this book for yourself. Go and read it. But I do recommend that you buy the physical copies because you never know when the censorship police are going to rob you of your information like they did with this. This book here, like I said, was banned. So this is a physical copy. I can touch it. I can thumb through it. You know, Kindles can be taken down. And every time there's a censorship sweep, well, the books are gone. That's, that's modern-day book burning. You can find Rolo all over the Internet. All you have to do is go to rationalmail.com. You'll find everything you need there. And you can find his books on Amazon. But I want to leave you with something that I thought would be interesting. From what movie does Kevin Spacey's character whisper the name Rolo Tomasi? And what significance does this have in the film? <laughs>